Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 239 on October the 8th, 2022. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we'll cover the trades from last week on Cassava Sciences, Inc., Robinhood Markets, Inc., and the ProShares Ultra Pro Short S&P 500 ETF. And we discuss three new trades on Trisida, Inc., Annalee Capital Management, and AT&T. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a few videos to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. I also teach students how to trade options, not just study theory, but the combination of videos and live coaching calls. So if you're ready to take your trading up to the next level, send me an email and let's schedule a phone call. All right, the markets managed to finish the week above last week's low print. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 571 points, ending the week at 29,296 points. The S&P 500 index gained 54 points, closing at 3,639 points on Friday. And now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic of the week this week is trading on hope versus trading on math. And I think I probably covered this topic once uh, a couple of years ago, but always worth repeating. So I look at these two trading styles as being the opposite of one another. I'm defining trading on hope as making a trade solely based on a gut feeling or just hoping the market goes in a specific direction so that you can make a bunch of money. Trading on math, on the other hand, is doing the work to create a high probability trade based on option prices and market momentum. I'd love to tell you that I never trade on hope, but I would be lying. Every now and then, you'll get a gut feeling that is actually correct. And if you've been active in the markets for a while, That feeling might be a subconscious analysis of a bunch of logical observations that your conscious mind just hasn't acknowledged. It hasn't computed yet in your head. And for that reason, trading on hope or that gut feeling can sometimes be very profitable. However, I adjust my trading size to account for the fact that I'm just trading on a feeling, not on the mathematical parameters that I've already agreed would be the focus of my trading style. So when I trade using math, I feel more confident in my methodology. I know that I've accounted for the risk of the trade and properly sized my position based on the possibility and probability of loss. My best trades have been based on math. My best stories about trading are based on hope. So at this point in life, I have enough stories and I much prefer the math. If you find yourself looking at your position and being stressed out over the losses, losses that you didn't even think were possible, you're probably trading on hope. There aren't any 12-step programs for you, but you're welcome to shoot me an email to learn another way. I really love being right in the market, so trading on hope is fun every now and then, just because it makes me feel like, yeah, I was right on that one. I just do it a whole lot less often than I used to, and my account is much happier for it. All right, let's get into the trade review from last week. And it's always interesting. You know, you've got the market moving up and down every week. And the kicker is, even though the market has been on a downward trail all year long, it's just become more emphasized lately, I've had some wins this year buying call options and doing all of these things in between that you would imagine in a, in, a, in a downward trending year that you would end up losing money on. But because options have a very defined, a very uh, defined time period, uh, you know, based on expiration, you end up having these shorter period uh, trends or shorter period market movement that has allowed us to even make money on calls 
and not just completely lose money this year being long call spreads and selling put spreads. So anyway, let's dive into this week's trade review. Uh, we start off with the cover call. Looked at Casavia Sciences, Inc. Symbol S is in Sierra, A is in Alpha, V is in Victor, A is in Alpha. At the time, the stock was trading for $41.82 per share. We looked at buying stock and selling the October 42 call at $4.80, hoping for a return of 11.91% in three weeks. Well, stock fell $1.89 this week, closing at $39.93 per share. The call option we sold lost $1.93, leaving us with a net gain of $0.04 cents if we were to close the trade immediately. Now, with two weeks left, I typically like to roll the strike lower on our call option. And you can sell the 40.5, the 40 and a half strike in October at $3.15. Now, after doing the math, that would lower your upside significantly. The stock price still hasn't gone below our break even point. And that's because of how high that stock price was or that, that call option price was. So we really don't have to make any adjustments at this point. Let's see how the stock price looks over the next few days before deciding whether to roll the strike lower or to just allow our initial strike to expire worthless and out of the money, which would then allow us to go ahead and sell another call option in November. So even with the stock being down nearly $2, this trade is actually working out so far, so no adjustments are needed at the moment. Our next trade from last week was a credit spread on Robinhood Markets, Inc., Symbol H is in hotel, O is in Oscar, O is in Oscar, D is in Delta. Now at the time, the stock was trading for $10.10 per share. We looked at selling the October 10, nine and a half put spread at 17 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 33 cents per spread. Now shares of Robinhood grew 70 cents per share, ending the week at $10.80 per share. The out-of-the-money put spread we sold is now even more out-of-the-money. You could close the trade for a two-cent profit at the moment. However, we hope this trade expires fully out-of-the-money, which would allow us to keep the money that we collected for selling the spread. So, so far, so good on this trade. The trade's working out as planned, so no adjustments are needed. And here over the next two weeks before options expiration, you'll, especially with stock saying uh, well above $10 per share, you'll see this spread completely just uh, kind of peter out. It'll lose, uh, it, it's losing its time value quickly and it'll start to lose its uh, price based on, because there's no intrinsic value as well. So um, this trade's gonna work out, it should work out at least. So keep an eye on stock. And then our final trade for review last week was not a win because we were trading an ETF that does better uh, as the market goes lower, but that being said, I'm kind of uh, I'm not I'm not convinced it's going to be a complete loss over the next two weeks. So we looked at a debit spread on ProShares Ultra Pro Short S and P 500 ETF. Symbol S is in Sierra, P is in Papa, X is in X Ray, U is in Uniform. Now at the time, the stock was trading for twenty two dollars and forty two cents per share. I looked at buying the October twenty one half twenty two call spread for thirty three cents which could give us a maximum gain of 17 cents or that's a 51 and a half percent return in three weeks. Now, shares of the SPXU lost $1.29, ending the week at $21.13 per share. The end the money call spread we bought is now out of the money. We are also below the break even, uh, the break even price, which means that we've made a loss on this trade and we can consider making an adjustment. But before I move forward, remember, this ETF increases in value when the S&P goes down. So in buying a call spread on this ETF, you really have put a put spread on the overall market. So I would only make an adjustment on this trade. Well, first off, you can make an adjustment on this trade just being rules-based because we are below the break-even price. However, just know that if you... If you don't believe that stock is going to rally or stay still over the next two weeks, especially after the job, the, the, the huge job number that we had uh, this week, or at least the positive job number, then, you know, by all means, adjust it. 
But if you think that the markets could head lower in the coming weeks, especially as the talk increases about the Fed making another rate change and, um, you know, just continuing the, 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 the pathway they've put us on already, then this trade may actually work out decently over the next two weeks. Now, that being said, that's what you just heard was hopium versus math going on in my head, uh, <laughs> tying back to the topic of the week. But um, that's, that's, this is the reason I trade spreads. I can trade spreads because I've already come to terms with the possibility of loss uh, and I adjust my trade size accordingly. Um, but I, wanna, I do want to put myself in a position to be able to capture the full value of the spreads, of, especially the ones that I buy. So let's continue. So uh, right now, the spread pri uh, is pricing for a 20 cent loss on the week. Now, we can change this uh, debit spread into a credit spread by selling the 21 half, 22 half call spread at 25 cents. That would leave us with a short 22, 22 half call spread and allow us to recoup some of the losses immediately. It also changes the overall risk for this trade. So I'd have to be comfortable with that short spread before deciding to adjust the trade in this manner. And re remember, even if you do decide to flip the, the spread, from being a spread that we bought into being a spread that we sold, it's still a spread. So all of the numbers are known. Your gain, your possible gain is known, your possible loss is known, everything's defined. You're not just betting on red or black in this scenario. So either way, um, whether you decide to flip the spread or not, it's definitely worth considering as long as you understand the risk. That's the caveat to all of this is making sure you understand the risk. So um, I'm not exactly, I'm not totally bullish on the market over the next couple weeks overall. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to let this one ride a little bit and see what happens over the next week before options expiration. So uh, that's it for the trade review from last week. Now, we are only two weeks away from the October monthly options expiration on October 21st. This will be our last week on this show using the October uh, expiration uh, for 2022. So just know that the trades uh, that I talk about on, this, on today's show are inherently more risky because there's less time to adjust the trades. They have very little uh, time value uh, still priced in. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, we'll start using looking at uh, November trades um, using the November monthly options expiration. We'll start that next week. So we'll start off with the covered call. Looking at Triceta Inc., symbol T is in Tango, C is in Charlie, D is in Delta, A is in Alpha. The stock ended the week at $12.25 per share. I'm looking at buying stock and selling the October 12 and a half call at $4.10, which could give us a return of 35%, 35.5% in two weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying stock for $12.25 per share and selling the October 12 and a half call at $4.10. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $12.50 per share. The break-even price is $8.15 per share, and in real terms, the stock purchase will require $1,225, and you would collect $410 for selling the option. Our next trade on the week is going to be a credit spread. Looking at Annaly Capital Management, symbol N as in November, L as in Lima, Y as in Yankee. Stock ended the week at $16.27 per share. I'm looking at selling the October 16 half 17 call spread at 15 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 35 cents per spread. You enter this trade by selling the October 16 half call at 53 cents and concurrently buying the October 17 call for 38 cents. This is a credit spread because we are selling the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices remain below $16.50 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $16.65 and in real terms, you'll receive $15 per spread that you sell and have $35 at risk. Our final trade on the week is gonna be a debit spread on AT&T Symbol T as in Tango. The stock ended the week at $14.94 per share, and I'm looking at buying the October 15 half 15 put spread 
for 31 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 19 cents, or that would be a 61.3% return in two weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying the October 15 half put for 77 cents and concurrently selling the October 15 put at 46 cents. This is a debit spread because we are buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices remain below $15 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $15.19 per share, and in real terms, you'll pay $31 to enter the spread, and your maximum gain is $19 per spread. So that's it for this week's show. Thank you guys so much for listening to the show and for sharing it with your friends, and thank you to all of you guys who have emailed me questions or just... Uh, letting me know that you listen to the show. I love hearing it. It's great to know that you listen and that you appreciate the show. So keep on writing, keep on listening. If you have anything that you'd love to see me uh, change or add to the show, feel free to share that as well. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. And as always, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.